It's a blessing to see everyone this morning online. I thank God for each and every one of you. This is a day that God has made, and we are rejoicing, and we are glad in it. There are so many things happening around us, but I can't not tell you how full I am of God's joy, his spirit, and his strength. Uh, like many of you, there's probably challenges going on for you personally. I certainly have those things. I'm in one of the busiest times in my life, and I know that it's actually an answer to prayer. And even though it's tough to go through what I have to go through over the next couple of months, I know that it's God setting the stage and preparing for a greater blessing. And so I'm very staying in tune with him during this time of challenge. And many times when people are in a challenge, they run the opposite way, but I've been running to the Lord and he's been my strength and I pray that he's been your strength. I thank God for prayer. and I thank the, God for those that have been faithful in prayer. It is good to spend time with you in prayer because we really grow together even as we pray together. And I thank God because there's nothing else you know to do. It is to pray. And I thank God for prayer this morning. I thank God for each and every one of you. I am inspired by all of you as I entertain the question for our John community chat today, I just began to think of each of you and different things about you that certainly inspired me. And I pray that you remain inspired by God himself, his spirit, his word, but also by each other. And I appreciate encouraging one another. We have no idea uh, how valuable that is. The Bible talks about encouraging one another, but it is so important to put that into practice. I know that I love to hear encouraging words because again, you don't know what it looks like. And I'm someone that when I'm going through a lot, you won't know because I really focus on not giving the devil any glory for all the stuff that he might be trying to do to me because I know that it's not going to prosper. I know that God is going to strengthen me through it. I know that I'm going to come out better for it. And so again, it's about that perspective. And I thank God for that perspective perspective because I don't want to glorify the enemy. I want to glorify the name of the Lord. And so I'm here today as if when you wake up, I'm victorious because I've woken again for another day. And again, God's joy is renewed every single day. And I thank God this morning. I thank God for everything that he is doing. He is doing great things and we just have to remain faithful to him. And I'm expecting God to do greater things. And that's that theme for us is greater, greater expression, greater than before. And that is just what I'm living for every single day. I don't know about you, but I my life is very, very busy, but it's not too busy for God. I mean, I stay excited about this theme because I know it's for us and it's for you even personally, greater than before. And again, taking your life to greater levels. It's interesting. Many Christians are, we've gotten in comfortable kind of having this rise and fall experience with God. And we stay so focused on ourselves all the time. Like God just saved us to deal with all of our problems. But as you've heard this morning, you've heard throughout the year, the messages, God wants us Hallelujah, to have more so that we can do more for him in the earth and letting his kingdom be demonstrated through what he's called us to do. And so it's good to live life with purpose, knowing that I'm heading toward a destination so that I can be reflective of the kingdom of God in the earth. And so I pray that you remain motivated and you don't think that this is just about you, God, dealing with all of our problems. God is not a, a psychiatrist or shrink that we just go to when we have problems. He helps us out of our problems. We go along for a while and then we get in trouble again. Then we come back to him. Let's not use God that way and just know this is God, Holly, the creator and sustainer of the universe. This is God who has all power. This is God, the creator. There are so many things to think about when we think about our God and not diminish him to just taking care of our problems because he's very beyond that. Now, this week, I have been on a lot of travel, but I was in Atlanta uh, when Dr. Charles Stanley passed on April 18th. And again, you talk about being inspired. This is someone that has inspired my walk with God for the decades that I've been saved well, for almost 40 years. I thank God for Charles Stanley and his ministry over the years uh, and his family and just the witness he has been in the earth. And if you really got into Charles Stanley, you'll see his life had lots and lots of challenges, but you talk about a consistency with God. This is another one of those great uh, theologians, but really just servant of God, because that's really what he liked being, just serving God's people and getting the message of Jesus out there. And that drove him his entire life. And so I thank God uh, for his witness. And again, I uh, just want to acknowledge that today. And if you haven't heard of Charles Stanley or you haven't listened to a message of his, uh, this is a good time to do so because I'm sure they're going to have a lot of uh, treats for us uh, just to celebrate his um, passing. It was interesting. I was watching his viewing, which was on Saturday, uh, and he had over uh, 
five and a half, almost six hours just for people to walk in and, and just walk through and view uh, his casket and take a moment. It's just powerful that a man uh, of, of God, a person of God would have that witness where it takes six hours just for his congregation just to walk through and for a memorial of him. So I just thank God for his life. And you talk about gr greater expression. When you look over his ministry, it just grew and grew and grew in an expression of Christ. And again, his heart was always to get this word out to as many people and to as many ways and so he was always open to technology and everything and that he didn't even work wasn't expert in but he was always open to God doing greater things and God did that with his life and so I thank God uh, for that and just want to acknowledge that as we go into the word I pray this morning that you your hearts are open that you be blessed with God's word today I know he has a word for each of us and so the subject is walking long and walking strong because there are many of us here, I know, that have a testimony. If you've been walking with the Lord more than a year, two years, three years, five, 10, 20, et cetera, walking long, walking strong is what I want to talk about today. And really think about the benefits and results of walking with Christ, because we should personally demand to see that in, in your life. I know for me, I do. When I feel myself moving to the left or veering away from God, there's a, an accountability that comes up in me through the spirit, through the spirit of conviction. The Holy Spirit will convict me if I'm not doing things that I know please God. And so that, that to me is one of the benefits of having the spirit in me to kind of alert me when I'm walking off. And so there are benefits and results of walking with Christ. And I want to really stress that today because some Christians Christians today are just in the church, and they're not really having a transformative experience. The Spirit of God is not in them, where their life is actually changing. And many are the same person they was before they got saved as they are after they got gotten saved. So it's really important. What does it mean to walk with God, to walk with Christ, to, to walk in His Word, to have His Spirit alive in us? What does it really mean? What is the difference or distinction in our lives? We're not better than any other human, because God loves all of us, because we're His creation. But when we have Christ in our lives, there is a distinctive life that we begin to live and a way we lead, hallelujah, that really shows that we are ambassadors of heaven and actual children of God. There is a light that comes and everything that we go through, we go through it differently than someone who doesn't know Christ. And so it's important to hold ourselves accountable. And I know it's hard when others hold you accountable, but we should be the first person to hold our own selves accountable, even before someone else has to do it and not get mad when people do point out some things, but we jumped, oh, don't judge me and so forth. But, you know, judge yourself, if you will. But walking long and walking strong, and let's talk about the, the benefits and results of walking with Christ, which I think God wants to emphasize for us today, greater expression. And I really feel this is one of those pastoral messages really over the sheep. Uh, just so I pray that you receive what God has to say. So we look at people and you can see age like this. I think this was a beautiful picture, right? And for me, I looked at this and I said, hmm, the length of life does not always speak to the quality of life. And if you ever see people, and just from traveling a little bit for myself, and I go around, I see people living in certain situations or in certain countries, places, there's a uh, life on their face that you can see. But even though you see older people, you say they, they lived a long life. But what was the quality of life about? And so I want you to kind of think of that too. I've been with walking with God a long time, but what is the quality of my life with God? Because I think that's what God wants to speak to. Because today people are have gotten lazy. We've gotten very lax about our relationship with God. And so the quality may not be where it should be. And I know that if you're like me, you want to make sure that the quality of my life with God is really reflective of the length that I've been with him. So the length of life does not always speak to the quality. And so even when Christ has changed our life, many don't... You, that change is not reflective. We should see that change in our lives. And if we're doing the same thing over and over, then something is wrong because Christ came and changed our lives. And so what are the things that you and I can list that have really changed? Has your attitude changed about things? Has your response to things changed? And I would think those are two things that we should be able to speak about. Yeah, the way I used to think about things, I don't anymore. And therefore, my attitude has changed. My will and desire to do certain things has changed. My, my desire to, to be around certain things, around certain people has changed because Christ has come into my life. And the more that I grow with him and walk with him, then other things, other transformations are going on. But when you don't see anything reflected, then that is a problem. 
Now, this is Violet Moss Brown. She passed away, but she was uh, celebrated as one of the oldest centenarians in the world, and she passed away a couple of years ago. But her life and it was talked about a lot in the news, but she said walking with she had been walking with God for a very, very long time. And so I want to use her to think about walking with God for a long time. Some people can't stay saved for two years or three years because stuff happens, they just fall back because they haven't really let go of the world. And there are Christians even right now that are doing things now. The enemy has set them up to pull them out later on, and they don't even realize it just yet because they have been walking with God, but they have not been walking strong with God. And the enemy is just waiting for that opportunity to pull them away from God. And many times it's happening and people don't realize it because the enemy is so subtle with that. But what does walking with God for a long time really look like? And we talk a lot about how long we've walked with God. People brag, yeah, I've been serving God for 10 years, five years, 35 years, and it's really been a long walk. But the question is, what has been the quality of the walk? What about a strong walk? So you've had a long walk with God, but has it been a strong walk with God? There are so many people in the church, and people say, I grew up in church. I've been in church all of my life, but that does not mean what people want it to mean. And it's a deception from the enemy. Just because you've been in the church all of your life, it does not really speak to the relationship that you've had with Christ or you've had with God. And so many times people think because I'm familiar with the church that I'm walking strong. But are we really walking strong? So insights about walking with God. And the Bible says in Genesis 5, 24, Enoch walked with God. He was not found among them because God took him away to be home with him. So Enoch walked so closely to God that God just took him out of here. And so I love the Amplified Version because it's, it adds in reverent fear and obedience. And so walking with God, we have to walk with God in this reverent fear and obedience. Some people treat God like, hey, what's up, God? I, yeah, casual relationship. He is God Almighty. And how we reference God. And I know we're living in a certain culture that wants cool with God. That's great. But I don't ever want to, to lose the majesty of my God and the way I worship him, I, whether I'm by myself or in public, I give him glory as God and I'm humbled, hallelujah, by who he is. And I don't want to diminish who he is. And so walking with this fear and obedience to God, and that's what we should, we've committed to Christ and therefore we should be walking with Christ. And that's why it's important to be in a church, a Bible believing church, a Bible teaching church, because it's really how we learn how to walk with God. And insights, we have to walk in fear and we walk in obedience to him. That's what God wants from each and every one of us. The church should not be a social club, but it should be your spiritual hub. People treat church like this. So I go to this church, I go to that church. Oh, they have this, they have that. It's a social club. People go where they're feeling good, they're getting all their services like a club. But it's not a social club. It should be your spiritual hub. It's the place that I come to hear the word of God. It's the place where I come to be shepherded by a man or woman of God who God has placed in my life. It is where I come to fellowship with other believers, to talk about things of God, to share in my life so that I can be strengthened. And I also come to strengthen others. I don't come just to take away, but I come to give. I come to serve. I come to learn how to serve. It's my spiritual hub. It's where I'm building this spiritual life where I don't build it on my job. I'm not necessarily building it in my community community. But when I come to this church, this called out body of believers, it's my spiritual hub. It's a physical space when we come for sure, but I'm connected to others that are part of the great church. But again, it's not a social club, you all. It's a spiritual hub and that's what it's about. And we should be hungry to come to be fed spiritually, not just as a social thing where well, I feel like going today. And people, like again, they show up when they want to and how often they want to. But it's not a social club, you guys. It's a spiritual hub. Other insights about walking with God, and, and I'm basing this on 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. But we also see in Genesis 6, these are the records of the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, one who was just and had right standing with God, blameless in all and in evil, in the evil generation. Noah walked with God. And here, the translation, he lived with God. He lived in habitual fellowship with God. And people are trying, Christians today, they try to do both. They want to hang out with the world and hang out in the church. But their fellowship can interrupt your walk with God. 
whether you want to realize it or not. And it's hard if you haven't lived long enough to know. But I'm telling you that when you hook up with the wrong thing, it'll pull you away from the things of God. And you'll find yourself stumbling in your walk. I don't care who you are. Corinthians lets us know, don't be tied up unequally to people that don't believe because those things, those kind of people can have a tendency of pulling you away from the things of God. Noah walked in habitual fellowship, habitual fellowship. I go to church regularly. I go to truth seekers. I go to Bible foundations. I, that's part of what we do in this particular church. And people that don't do that on a regular habit, that is a problem. And that, I spend lots of time in prayer. I'm like, God, if they would just get connected and solid, they can build a life. But it's hard to build a life if you're not willing to lay down a foundation in your life. What's wrong with letting people know, I can't do this because I have Bible study. I can't do this because I study the board on this day. I can't do this because I go to church. That I'm part of a spiritual hub and that's why I'm getting fed. Habitual fellowship. You can't have up and down, in and out. It's hard to even build when people aren't committed to something. Be committed to church. Be committed to prayer. Be committed to reading your Bible. These are things that help strengthen you as you walk with God. And this is what it looks like. There's a habitual fellowship with God and with other believers. And when your Bible talks about your walk, anytime you're reading that, it's really referring to your lifestyle, how you're living. And that's what we're talking about today. Micah 6 and 8, God says he's told us what's good. God requires us to do justice, embrace faithful love, and walk humbly with your God. And this justice is not the same as man's justice. I know people into the justice movement, but do you understand God's justice and living righteously and right standing with God? That's what we need to understand. Embracing faithful love. I'm talking about not walking in unforgiveness. People have attitudes and unforgiveness with people. They think it's like a light thing, but it's not a light thing because because God forgave you and he expects you to forgive others, not waiting for people, but really granting forgiveness to folks to the point where it doesn't even build up in you because you know God wants us to forgive. And there's so many people that have so many issues with other people today. You don't want to be living. You can't walk strong with God if you're walking around with things in your heart against other people. God expects a requirement that we embrace this kind of love. And then walking humbly. That's how we have right standing with God. Amos 3, will two people to get, uh, will walk together unless they agree? So think about that. The folks that we're associated with, those we're spending time with, giving of ourselves, being taken of ourselves from others. You can't walk unless you agree. Galatians 2 and 20. Again, we have to understand the life that we now live in our body, we live by faith indeed, by the faithfulness of God's son. Jesus died for us and that we may have life and have it more abundantly. This is the life that we're living, a life in Christ, empowered by Christ. Romans 8 and 29 also right? We know this because God knew them in advance and he decided in advance that they would what? Be conformed to the image of his son. So when you talk about lifestyle, we talk about how we live and how people do so many things today and you really don't know, well, do you follow God or do you follow yourself? You follow what? What are you following? Because the lifestyle is so confusing, but we need to see agreement in the lifestyle. There's an agreement with God and people don't like what God wants to do for our lives all the time. And that's why he says, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not yours. They're much higher, much beyond. But we can't even submit to that because we don't have agreement with God. God, you're telling me to wait for a mate, but I see somebody right now that looks like they're the right one. I'm going to do this. Wait to do that. Wait to take this move or that move. We say, no, I don't agree with you, God. I want to do this now. So agreement is a sign of walking with God, but a lifestyle, what are you in alignment? What do you agree with? And so alignment's important. Are you aligned with God? So when you're walking with God, you want to walk strong, then there should be some alignment. You're not going to grow and strengthen God if there's not alignment. Hallelujah. There has to be alignment. And then conformity. We should be conformed to the image of Christ. Be not conformed, but we be transformed and renewed by our minds, God says. And we have the mind of Christ, and we our lives become conformed into the image of Christ. And so agreement, alignment, and conformity, our lifestyle should be marked by that agreement with God, alignment with God, and conforming to Christ. And embed in this lifestyle, these other things that come right from scripture. And just think about it because it's just true. Even from the Old Testament, reading Kings, Ahab's son, Ahaziah, 
right? Walked in the ways of the house of Ahab and did evil in the sight of the Lord. And so people choose to walk in the darkness. They walk in the evil. They love it. They cherish it more than they like light. That's just true. It's true in the old days. It's true now. And there's some people just want to do that in their lifestyle. And we see that around us. Ephesians 2 and 2 says this, on which you once walked. We used, we used to walk in that darkness. You are following the ways of this world. So we're influenced by the world. And again, when you're walking with God, we have to watch the influences of the world. So be careful what you take on. And some people think they're so bad that you can handle anything, but you just can't. None of us just can't handle things on our own. And it's delusional to think that you can, but you will be influenced by this present age because you were before, but now that you're in Christ, in accordance with the prince of the power of this air, this is Satan, right? The spirit is now working in the disobedient, those who are unbelieving, who fight against the purposes of God. And hear that, fighting against the purposes of God. I'm living for a purpose, God's purpose. And I know the enemy fights against God's purpose for me and the earth because it's for God's kingdom's glory. And that's the same for each and every one of you. What God has placed in you, what he wants you to do, the enemy does not want that to come to pass. And so it fights against the purposes. And that's why you have to be careful how you walk and who you walk with. And it's okay to walk alone. And if you're dealing with loneliness and say, God, help me, because I'd rather be alone than walking with the wrong people. I'd rather be alone with God than walking with the wrong people. And I've had those times in my life too. And many people you talk about may share, many Christians might share the same testimony. Yes, sometimes you have to walk alone because people don't want to make that kind of commitment to God. Colossians 3 and 7, and in these things, you were once walked. Again, we used to walk that way when you were habitually living in them. So again, God broke the habit. He broke the chains. So why are people going back to bondage? Why do you go back to situations in darkness when we should be walking in the light? You cannot become strong if you don't leave the darkness and walk in the light. And we have to be careful today because we're living in what they call this cancel culture. So if I say something that's unacceptable to you or you don't like what I'm saying, then you can cancel me. You can just erase me. And that's what they're doing with the Bible or people that preach the Bible. They don't want to hear hard preaching. They want to hear soft preaching. No preaching at all. Just give me a soft message, right? Well, you're probably not going to get that here because I'm responsible for the truth. And when people hear truth, and we're living in a time now where people just cancel it out. But you and I better know the truth for yourselves. And that's why you better walk. You better pray. You better read your word and know it for yourself. And the spirit of God be alive in you. And that's got to be part of your daily prayer because I don't want to be deceived, God. I don't want to be canceling out truth, God. I don't want to become like the world around me. But this is where the times that we're living in. And for Paul would talk to the church in Philippi, Philippi, right? So that you may prove your, to yourselves be blameless, guiltless, and innocent and uncontaminated children of God without blemish in the midst of what? A morally crooked and spiritually perverted generation. And you know that's where we're living today, where everything is okay. And if you don't agree with everything, you get canceled just like that. If you don't agree with the doctrines and philosophies of men today, you will get canceled. And that's what's happening in the age that we're living in. And what, and the fourth verse says, do everything without murmur or questioning the providence of God. Again, people are questioning God, questioning God, but he's already said, your thoughts are not mine and your ways are not mine. So we have to do everything God has called us to do, walk in obedience. One thing I love about Charles Stanley, that's what he emphasized all the time. I don't understand all things, but he was told to look to God who is responsible for the life he's called you to. And he didn't look to man regardless of what was going on. He didn't question or murmur. And so walking long, walking strong. What am I saying? Let's go to Ephesians, because you all know Ephesians 3, right? So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith. And you haven't been, what, deeply rooted and securely grounded in love. And this is the idea of being planted in God. And many people in churches aren't planted. They Wherever they are, to me, it doesn't matter. If you're a Bible-believing church, you're okay. But if you don't plant yourself in that church, then you're not going to grow. People are just moving about on, not getting settled, don't come to Bible study, come to church when it's convenient, they don't come to any other studies, they don't fellowship, they don't do those things because they don't really get planted in this. And you need to be rooted and grounded, hallelujah, being fully capable, then understanding, because you can't understand if you're flying by here or there, hearing some uh, Christian jargon here and there, but not really getting into the word of God yourself. 
praying is so important and people, I don't care how busy you are. If you don't have time to pray, then you're going to have a problem in your walk with God. You're not going to become strong in the Lord. But again, being rooted and grounded, being capable of comprehending with all the saints, I mean, God's people, the width, the height, the length, the depth of his love. And what Paul was talking about, this full experience of God's amazing and endless love. You don't really know what that's like yet until you really get yourself settled. As you're walking with God, that's when you become strong in the Lord. Like, wow, I am overcome by this love of God in my life. And God wants you to experience that. What is it like to be protected by a king of kings? and Lord of Lords. What is it like to have your life covered by God and giving God that opportunity to cover your life, giving God that opportunity to come through for you, being faithful to hang on and, and endure as a good soldier and watch God come through, giving him that opportunity to show you who he is. And some people just can't wait. God, I didn't trust you, so I did it myself. But learning how to wait on God, and I can't move from that because I've had my own personal testimony how God has come through. And so I don't doubt God. And so people say, well, when is it going to happen, Pastor Ken? When is I don't know, but I'm telling you to hang on in there. I'm telling you to wait on God. I'm telling you to trust him with all your heart and your might because he will come through. But many can't wait because you're not planted yet. And then he says, and that you may come to know the practical ways of knowing. You know him through praying. You know him through reading your word. You know him through fellowshipping with the saints, not fellowshipping with people that don't know a lick of God's word, not with people that don't have faith in God to deliver, faith in God to heal. Hallelujah. Not people that don't know God. But you want to be around those that know him, that you have this personal experience with God, that are going to tell you that God is your savior, that God will come through for you. I'm praying that God covers and bless you. You need to be around people that know God, that can give you that word, because sometimes we do get low. But I don't run to Oprah. I don't run to other people. I run to someone who knows God, and I say, pray for me. Hallelujah. Because I know that you have a relationship and experience with him that passes knowledge right? And then that we may be filled with the fullness of God, the Holy Spirit. And as you're walking with God, that's how you become strong. Filling, I'm filled with God's Spirit. I have this rich experience of God's presence in my life. Hallelujah. And then when I need him, I call him and he is there. There are times when we go through you all, but if you take your time to set aside time to pray and seek God, I know God will overwhelm you with his presence. And there's nothing like the presence of God, like the song and the liturgy today, pressing and breaking. That's all making new wine. I don't mind going through because I know God's got me because that's what his word says. So being planted. And so this is how you become strong. So be strong in the Lord. Pray like you should. Read your word like you should. Fellowship with other believers. Exchange the word of God. Encourage one another. Be strong and help others to be strong. Don't just walk long, but be strong in your walk. Walk strong, not just brag about I've been in the church all my life, I've been saved for so many years, but are you walking strong? God wants you to be strong and to walk strong. And this is a quote I want to share today. Remember, it is not your weakness that will get you in, in, in the way of God's working through you, but your delusions of strength. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. So point to his strength by being willing to admit your weakness. And some people don't want to admit that we're, we're human. Without God, we can do nothing. Apart from him, the word says, we can do nothing. So you're trying to accomplish stuff without God. And I'm telling you, you are not strong as you think you are. Don't even think that you're strong. Just say, my strength comes from God. And without him, I am not strong. There's nothing, I, that's a, a humble state of mind to be in because it's just the truth. Hallelujah. You and I have to be careful of having delusions of strength. Oh, I can handle that. And that's what people tell you. Oh, I, I, I know they're not saved, but I, I can handle being around them. Can you really? Keep an eye on that. And eventually you'll find yourself, next thing you know, something's going on. People are falling away or they're experiencing this, experiencing that. Again, if you have delusions of strength today, let it go. Let it go. Hallelujah, because you are not strong without God. And again, as you're walking with him, that looks different and grows in your life. What does it mean to walk strong? You need to start testifying. Well, you know, I didn't used to pray at all. But now that I've been walking long and getting strong in God, I find myself, I have to pray in the morning. Because that's what happens over time. You cannot be saved for a period of time and then say, it's hard for me to pray. You're not growing strong in God. Because you should, that hunger to pray at this point, reading God's word. So again, don't delude yourself that you're strong when you're not. Let's learn how to walk strong. See, fragility and weakness, and people may look strong, but they're fragile because least little thing happens that gets thrown off. 
I mean, people wake up with a headache. Oh my God, I'm going to die. No, be gone, headache. Speak to that headache, right? You can't slow me down today. And I don't know about you all. Sometimes I prayed and I've accepted my healing in the morning time. But by 10 a.m., 11 a.m., that, that headache is still there. That migraine wants to come on. And I'm still saying I am healed in Jesus' name. And I'm keeping it moving because I'm not allowing that to take dominance over my body. And it's some point I feel God's strength and I'm all right by one or two o'clock in the afternoon. That's what I'm saying. I am not fragile in my faith. Hallelujah. I know that every day is not a great day. I know that there's some hills to climb, all of that. So I'm not fragile in my faith or weak. We know who we are. We know the enemy wants to slow us down. And therefore, when he comes, we do have some strength to fight back because again, greater is he that's in us than he is in the world. So again, you walk strong. Don't walk all fragile like the least little thing happens. You ready to get up. No, I don't give up like that. Hallelujah. Being effective in our lives, not just effective. And effective is emotional. People are not effective, but they're quite emotional about being saved, right? They are going through all these emotions. It's not all about your emotions. It's got confidence and faith. You need to know I am saved in Jesus' name. It's not even emotional sometimes. You can get emotional, right? But you want to be effective in your walk, not just emotional in it. I'm effective in it. Where I've learned how to endure certain things. I've learned how to be content in this or that and keep God's agenda moving in the name of Jesus. Be effective. That's what happens when you walk long and walk strong. I am not effective in what God has called me to do in the earth. My light is shining. It's not flickering and it's not out. I'm not a Christian that's walking around with a burnt out fuse. No, I'm effective. Hallelujah. And that's what we should desire to be. And so strength. And when you walk long and you walk strong, then strength and stamina comes. You know how to endure. That's what Paul talked about. I've learned how to endure some things. And as you're growing in God, we should learn how to endure. Don't find yourself complaining about the same things you used to complain about three years, five years ago. Have some stamina. Say, I'm able to endure longer than I used to. And this is what it looks like as you're growing and walking strong. So if you want to be strong in faith, then you have to stand in faith. See, that's the thing. You could become stronger as you stand. Having done everything, continue to stand, and God will strengthen you in your stance. So if you really want to be strong in the faith, and somebody out there say, I want to be strong in my faith, then you have to stand in your faith. And if you want strength, then you have to be open to being strengthened. Hallelujah. But people that don't pray, people that don't read God's word, then how is he going to strengthen you? Magic dust from the sky, it doesn't happen like that. If you want strength and you need to be open to being strengthened, you need to go to church. You need to hear a word from God. You need to read a word of God. You need to pray. You have to be open to being strengthened. Hallelujah. So walking without commitment. And that's what people are doing. Many Christians, they're walking long but not walking strong because they're not really committed as a Christian. So Jesus said, who will walk with me? Come walk with me. Remember the young man, uh, Jesus, um, let me go home for a minute and I'll be right back. People, your priorities, either you're walking with them or you're not. Either you want this life or you don't. People are trying to do two things. And I'm telling you, you can't. Give me a minute, I'll be right back. Lord, let me just finish up this relationship and I'll be okay. No, no, no. Follow me. Hallelujah. And walk with commitment. That way you'll be strong. Also, walking long, but not strong. All right? What is, because again, I've been in the church all my life. But the question really is, how long has the church been in you? Because there's some Christians been walking for a long time, but you can't tell the church is in them. They're not the ecclesia. There's nothing, nothing about them says that. So you may have been walking long with the church all your life, but is the church in you? His church, do you understand the power that's in you? Is it really in you? Again, people and Christians, they talk a lot, but hearts are very far from God. And it's, it's disappointing sometimes when you meet folks and it's like, wow, you're not living worth a lick. All that big talk you was doing, I thought you were really living this thing, you know? And I'm not judging. I'm just saying there's no power. You know, when you see people doing stuff or, or, or swearing here, it's like, well, really? He can't keep you from doing that kind of stuff? No, there's this strength that comes as you walk with God over time. Hallelujah. So close, but not close, you know, like a child, you know? I'm sure this little boy here is, you know, not taking in the word at that deep level. It's close, but not close, right? So proximity, the physical closeness does not equate to intimacy, attachment. So people are proximate to God, but they're not intimate, right? You're close, you come to church, you do this, you do that. But again, are you really attached to him? Is there an intimate relationship between you and God? 
Even though you've been walking long, are you walking strong? Are you walking that intimacy with God is the question. You know, it's like somebody that says, you know, a college student, you know, yeah, he's my roommate. Well, I'm not close and I'm close to him, but I'm not close to him, right? People make that distinction. People, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, he's my roommate. I'm close to him, but I'm not close to him. Because some people say they're close to people, but they'll emphasize, but I'm not close to him. What are they saying? We're not really attached. We're not really intimate like that. And I'm not talking in a sexual sense. I'm just like intimate connection is, is what people are really connected in this. So there are some of you that know what I'm talking about because you love your brothers and sisters because there's something that you feel intimately connected with them because of Christ. Hallelujah. Thank God for that intimacy. That's what we're talking about. Not just being physically close to somebody, but really having that intimate attachment is what we want with God. So just walk strong is what I want to share today. Like in Ephesians 6, like in conclusion, at the end of that, it says like, finally, be, be strong. Draw your strength from him. Be empowered through your relationship with God and the power of his might. Hallelujah. Not our own strength, but be strong in God. Let God be strong in you. That is all we're saying in the message today. Hallelujah. Walking in the times of climate change. And you know about climate change. It refer like the shifts in temperature and weather patterns. Everyone's talking about climate change. And again, it has a lot to do with what we're doing. And we're the drivers of that change. But think about spiritual climate change, because I've also been praying about that, because that's what's going on. We're, there's people are, there's a different thing going on in the spirit. So there's a spiritual climate change. And the main driver is this declining spiritual behavior. So people are forsaken to assemble themselves together. Even when it's simple to click on and come online, people are not even doing that anymore, right? This decline in spiritual behavior. You stop praying the way you used to pray. You stop going to Bible study or prayer like you used to. Again, that's declining that behavior. There's a falling away from the faith according to 2 Timothy. That's what's going on in this climate change. There's apostasy out. He's just absolutely falling away. And also there's intermittent prayer. Like the Bible says pray without ceasing, but people pray when it's convenient. They pray when they remember. But how about being committed to some consistent prayer? How about being committed to getting online and, and having prayer? It's so easy now. You don't have to physically go anywhere, but people don't want to pray. I'm praying with many people, not just the prayer we do here, but I'm connected with other prayers because I love praying and I don't deny praying. If you want to pray, let's pray. And then also we live in a time where people are exchanging truth for lies. That's what's going on. That's the climate change. The spiritual climate has changed. And so as I conclude, I want to say this, you know, these are not twins, by the way, this is that doppelganger, right? So the brothers called error and truth. I want to talk about because Eve met these brothers in the garden. Error and truth in that conversation she had with the serpent. Like we right now get entertained by error and truth, the two brothers. And A.W. Tozer says this, so skilled is error at imitating truth. I'm going to say that again, because people think you're hearing truth, but error imitates truth. It's so skilled as error at imitating truth that the two are constantly being mistaken for each other. And even in the church, because people don't study for themselves, you're not growing strong in God. You can't discern between error and truth, right? And you mistake truth or error for truth, and it's not. It takes a sharp eye these days to know which brother is Cain and which is Abel. I'm encouraging you all, as you're walking with God, walk strong. Don't just walk long, but walk strong. So that you have discernment, you know what's going on. Jude 3 says, dear friends, I wanted very much to write you concerning the salvation we share. Instead, I must write to urge you to fight for the faith. We have to fight for the faith. Hallelujah. Don't be lax. Don't take this casually, but walk with God with a commitment that demonstrates it in your life where you're growing, you're strong in God. Hallelujah. And don't walk on the fringes because some people are comfortable. They don't really get involved, right? They just stay on the edge, if you will, on the fringes. And the fringes like those extra pieces on the edges of carpets. They don't stay on the carpet, but they're just at the fringes, right? On the border or the outer edge. And I'm telling you, don't play with God. People pretend, the Christians pretend they're all in, but Jesus said, no, your heart is very far from me. You're on the border. You're on the outer edge. Don't be an outer edge Christian, right? On the periphery right? Just on the outside, get into this thing. Come all in. There's nothing like giving him everything and come in with everything, you all. Everything. Don't walk on the periphery. And we're talking the parameter. Don't stay around stuff, but get into this thing. Amen. That's what God is calling. Because when you're on the fringes, you're nothing more than decorative because it looks pretty. 
when you look at rugs. And is that you? Are you just a decorative Christian? Are you one of those fringes that people see? Oh, they're in the church. Oh, so nice to see. Hey, sister so-and-so. Hey, brother so-and-so. Just decorative. They look great Christian. They look good, right? But they're not really involved. God wants us to move and become the fragrant, right? Not being decorative, but he wants us to be fragrant. Not just people to see you, but we should know that you're there. And that's that sacrifice that we offer worship, right? In Ephesians 4, walk in love, right? Just as Christ so loved you that he gave himself up for us and offering up sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. And that's what God presents yourself as a living sacrifice. We should not be decorative, you all, but we should be fragrant. That's what happens when you grow strong in God, where there's a fragrance of worship that comes from your life. And some of us, you're not walking strong and a little wind blows. Every challenge, you're like the dandelion. You lose everything. And that's where many Christians are today. That's what God wants to speak. When opposition blows, you lose it. It's time out for you losing your temper. It's time out for you being thrown off for the whole day. It's time out for your attitude just showing up that used to be. It's time out for all of that. Just when a little opposition comes, we have to be strong. And we have to encourage yourself. Be strong in the Lord. You don't want to be like this dandelion that a little wind blows your way and you lose it all. Time out for that. Learn to walk strong and you will walk along with God. As I said, learn to walk strong and you will walk along with God. Hallelujah. I close again, thinking about Charles Stanley. For me, I've grown in watching and following someone who follows God strongly. And there's a poem he used to read. Uh, and if you ever get a chance to hear it now that he's passed, he said, this is perfect joy and beauty and this everlasting light. And the pain and grief is over every restless tossing past. I can now at peace forever, safely home in heaven at last. He's safely home. And you hear his words now, I know that God greeted him well. There are two sermons that came to mind for me as I thought about my sermon for today. Uh, many by him, books by him, but there's two, Walking with God in Dark Times. And he just uh, did that in February of this year, if you had a chance to hear it. And then Are You Walking with God was from a few years ago. So again, make sure you're walking with God and you're walking strong with the Lord. And he always said, for him, his whole life, the one thing he wants people to remember about him, to obey God and leave the consequences with him. Obey God and leave the consequences with him. He kept his eyes on the God. He talked one time about a woman showed him a picture of Daniel with the lion surrounded and asked him, what do you see in the picture, Charles? And he uh, just talked about the lions. She said, no. She said, the man or the Daniel was looking up towards God, not at the lions. Don't look at your troubles. Don't look at your all the challenges around you, but look to God. Obey him and leave the consequences with him. And that's where he got that saying from that woman who gave him that wisdom many, many years in his life. So 78 years he walked with God. So he not only walked long, but Charles Townley walked strong. Hallelujah. And that is my prayer for each of you, that we not only walk long, but we walk strong in the Lord to the point where we are that fragrance. We are that light that shines in the earth and others are able to see him and glorify his name in heaven. So Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor. We thank you for today's message, really causing us to consider how we're walking. And not only that we walk with you and count up the years, but we also look at the quality of our walk with you and that we walk strong, that we are strong in the Lord and the power of your might. And so I pray for strength even now for all of us as Christians, as we are walking with you, we pray that we grow in you, that we're rooted and grounded, probably that we grow and always grow towards you, we grow toward one another and we grow deeper in our faith to you. We thank you again for this great opportunity of salvation that you've given us and we don't want to squander it. We want to be representatives in the earth of a life in Christ that so we live a way that others would see and glorify your name in heaven. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name, amen.